Brothers and sisters, welcome to First Presbyterian Church and our worship service for Sunday, August the 30th. Today I welcome you from what is our choir loft and unfortunately due to our circumstances we find that this area which is normally frequented by 30 to 40 people stands empty. It stands here though under the umbrella of the cross. And regardless of where we are, and regardless of the fact that we, we might be on our own or we might be with a small family group, we all gather under the umbrella of the cross wherever we are. And so that is the vein that we come to gather together. We come to worship because of the gift of our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. So it doesn't matter where you find yourselves today, know that the living God is with you. Let us prepare our hearts to worship the Lord our God.
broken world that has forgotten what peace feels like, let us extend to ourselves and to one another the peace that passes all understanding, a peace that exists only from knowing the living God, a peace that calls out to us amidst the turmoil and trials of life and says, I am with you always. May we constantly remember that fact. The peace of the Lord, Jesus Christ, be with you. Hear these words from John's Gospel. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. As we come to our time of prayer today, Let's take a deep breath. Today, as we pray, I will be making a number of petitions, at the end of which I will say, Lord, may your grace abound. To which you'll respond, Lord, may your will be done. Let us pray. As we pray, let your mind drift to the people and circumstances that are on your heart. Linger there. Draw them to mind. Present the names and circumstances to the Lord. Lord, may your grace abound. Holy and ever-loving God, we come as those made in your image. As your people, we, we pray for your church. Lord, guide it and light its path. Strengthen it and give it collective courage to proclaim your mighty acts with boldness. To witness to others. To speak truth into darkness to highlight injustice. Lord, may your grace abound. As your people, we pray for your creation, given unto us to toil and keep. Lord, may we be mindful of it for this generation and for generations to come. All its goodness points to you, its creator, and you alone. Lord, may your grace abound. As your people, we pray for the nations, this nation, our community. May they all walk humbly with you. May they free the oppressed, grant provision to, to those in need, bring justice to those who cry out. Defend the weak in their midst. Lord, may your grace abound. As your people, we pray for those in leadership at every level. May they have a heart after your own heart, Lord. May compassion envelop those that they lead. 
May they look to the restoration of your kingdom. Lord, may your grace abound. As your witnesses, we pray for loved ones. Through us, let your healing shine like a light. May your blessing fall like rain upon all who watch and wait for your help. May you be mindful of all their needs. Lord, all our needs. Lord, may your grace abound. We pray these things in the name of Jesus, your beloved, our Saviour and Lord. And we pray with him, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we come to this time of sharing our gifts, let us be mindful that the, the Lord provides a whole variety of gifts to us. We've spoken about our time, our talents, our, our treasures, and, and some are talented here in the kitchen and, and they give up their time in the kitchen to use the gifts that they've been given so that others might enjoy the things that they prepare. There are a whole variety of ways that we can give forth our gifts to the Lord. For some it is financial, for, for some it is time, for, for some it is using the gifts that they've been given, for some it's a, a combination of all three or just a couple. We give our gifts back to the Lord in gratitude for what God has given unto us for the furtherance of God's kingdom in this time and in this place. So let us give our gifts to the Lord. Wherever you are, whatever the circumstances you find yourself in, let us give thanks and praise to the Lord. O oh, gracious and holy God, as always we come before you with thanksgiving and praise upon our hearts for who you are. Lord, we are thankful that you're a God who's mindful of us. Lord, take who we are, what we are, what we have. As we give our gifts unto you, Lord, take them and use them for the work of your kingdom in this time and in this place. Lord, you can use us in ways far beyond our imagination. You can use us to, to transform not only ourselves, but the lives around us. So please do so. Take and use us, Lord. And now, quieten in us the, the noise of the world. Lord, help us to take solace in your word. As we hear it read and proclaimed this day, Lord. Guide our hearts, guide our minds. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, as we come to our time of message today, we're going to begin a, a five-week study uh, using the premises and, and themes of a, a book that the staff has been working our way through for the past six or seven weeks called The Neighborhood Church. If you want to get a copy of that book, please do so. There's going to be on the screen. You can see what it's called and who the authors are. And you can take a read through it. There are some interesting aspects to it, some that you might agree with and you might not agree with, like any book. Uh, but it's the, it's the thought process behind some of the aspects of what the book is saying is that we're going to examine as we go through these next five weeks. It's about what it means to work with others and work for the kingdom of God and for God's glory. Reality is, even though this is a, a book about how a church should go about or could go about interacting, it's also a reflection on ourselves as well. And so we can look at the aspects and the themes, both from a personal perspective, but also from a communal body of Christ perspective. The details and examples, as I said, within the book, you may or may not agree with. The direction that some of the churches have gone, you may not agree with. But again, the principles is what we're going to be taking a look at. And so over the, the next five weeks, we're going to look first and foremost this week about who's in and who's out. Who are us? And who are them or they? 
It's about the abundant provision that we have been given by the living God to do the things that God calls us to do. And do we recognize that abundance? In the second week, we're going to be talking about listening. We've spoken about listening before. We're going to talk about listening as a, as a, a, a thing that doesn't come cheaply. There's a cost to listening, but the outcome is worth it. In the third week, we're going to talk about partnerships and, and relationships. Are they, are they superficial? Are they perfunctory? Or are they deeper than that? And do they extend further? We're going to take a look at what that means in, in the terms of space and ideas, the, the space that we have as a, a church and its campus, the space of our own lives, the ideas that we can share. How do we go about utilizing those together? The fact that, we're, that the entities are not islands in and of themselves and, and the, uh, the sum of the two halves can be greater than the adding the two together. And then finally, we'll talk about what it means to, to deliberately decide to move that forward to working to enhance the things that are put in place and the relationships that are put in place to sustain the direction that's going on. So we're going to take five weeks to take Take a look at all of this. There's going to be two themes which thread their way throughout all the five weeks. One of those themes is boundaries. Where there are, there are boundaries in place both from a societal perspective but, but also from an individual perspective. That, that sometimes we have to look at ourselves and realize that we are the boundary. The other one is relationships. You know, we, we have as our vision statement the, the, the understanding that, we're, that we reach up to the living God, that we reach into one another, that we reach out to others, and that's all about relationships. It's sustained by relationships. And so those two themes of boundaries and relationships will, will thread their way through everything. So today, this first week, you know, you've heard me say before, it's not about us, it's about God. But when it comes to us as a community and as a body, listening to what it is that God is telling us, and who is the us, then it is about us. It's about us, who is in, who is out, who are we as the body of Christ. You know, I once listened to someone who had drawn 10 or 12 groups together. There was a particular issue that was going on and, and, and this person wanted, wanted to gather these people together and, and work out how we might be able to solve the problem. And he spoke to us for about an hour, a whole hour. I was very keen to hear what he had to say, but he didn't use the word we once. He didn't use the word us once. He wanted us to help him solve his problem. It wasn't about coming together and, and working together and listening to each other and, and developing a plan to, to overcome the issue. It was about him and what he wanted. It's about us as the kingdom of God and, and who comes together. But it's also an about the fact that we have the abundance of what God has given us and we need to look around in order to see that. God has given us the things that we need in order to accomplish the things that he calls us to do, and, and we have to recognize that. And instead of looking over here and looking over there, we need to look closer about what God has given to us. Live into the abundance that has been given around us and within us, because therein lies the solution. And both those things, in, in understanding who us is, and looking at the abundance instead of, instead of looking at what we haven't got, both of those require shifts in our thinking. Both require transformation. But the good news is that we worship a living God who knows all about transformation and knows that he can use us because that's the business that God is in. Why does God gather us together? Who is included? What do we need to do 
Or what we do, do we need to have in order to do what God asks us to do? Do we have it? We've already heard the words from Matthew's gospel talking about not worrying and not being anxious and, and the provision that God has given. And we'll return to that in a moment. But we're going to start off with the, the book of Acts and chapter 10. And we have, I know we've looked at this chapter recently, but we're going to look at the last four verses as a, as a culmination of what the whole of chapter 10 is about. You know, the backstory is that, that Peter... Um, going around and he's had this vision about not, not eating or uh, eating unclean meat. And at the same time, he's having his vision. There's a, there's a Roman centurion 30 miles north in Joppa talking about his, um, he's, he's had a vision. And his vision is to, is to send for Peter. And so Peter's there in his, in his house and he's praying. He's in, in his time of meditation and devotion. And there's a knock at the door and he ignores them and then gets prompted by the Holy Spirit because this is where the Holy Spirit works. And it's all about the work of the Holy Spirit. You see, Peter stands up and he goes and answers the door and there's these three Gentiles and they say to him, you've got to come up to Cornelius' house. As the first boundary, Peter engages with them and then he actually goes. And then when he goes up with, with all his people who are what they call the circumcised group, they are the in crowd, they all go up to Cornelius' house. And then not only do they go to the house, they actually enter into the house. That's another boundary. No, no. Jews don't enter into the houses of Gentiles. And when he gets in, Peter says, you know, why am I here? And Cornelius tells him about his vision, that he was to invite Peter, and Peter was to tell him the things that were on Peter's heart. And Peter starts off in, in the end of chapter 10, towards the end. 34, he says, Peter began to speak to them. And he began in a way that he'd never begun before. He said, I know that God shows no partiality. There's the another boundary which was about to be overcome. Cornelius was to listen to everything that Peter had to say. And verse 43 in the text, just before we read ours, it says, all the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Everyone. Who believes doesn't question the point of origin it says everyone and at that moment the Holy Spirit stepped in so let's listen to what the Spirit is telling the church this day as we read from the book of Acts chapter 10 verses 44 through 48 while Peter was still speaking the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word the circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. And Peter said, Can anyone withhold the water of baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? And so he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And then they invited him to stay for several days. This is the word of the Lord boundaries. In order for the conversation to even take place, boundaries had to be overcome. And it's, as I said, this theme is going to be throughout the next five weeks. Societal structures existed back then, and brothers and sisters, they exist today. Societal structures create boundaries in ourselves and, and in the things that we do, and we can find them all over the place. Who's in and who's out? All those boundaries are there. And we have to wonder and question, are those boundaries valid or do we need to overcome them? They can be overcome. And we can overcome them on the basis of grace. Grace applied can overcome those boundaries in the right moment and at the right time, in the circumstances that we find ourselves in. The living God is at work. The Holy Spirit moves around us and within us. Do we respond to the leading of the Holy Spirit? You know, those who were, who were circumcised, we just read, 
were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on Gentiles. Hours before, literally hours before, before Peter and them had entered into the house of a Gentile. They hadn't conceived that that was even a possibility, and yet now the Spirit says, yes, it is. And here's the living proof. The circumcised group was transformed as the other group, the Gentiles, were included. Both groups were changed. Both groups were changed. It became a a not us, Peter and his entourage, against those who were in Cornelius' house, the, the Gentiles. No, it became an us. And it was always us. It was just going to take revelation to understand it. Are we the circumcised? Are we astounded when we look around us and we see who is included? Or do we sit behind the boundaries that are in place safely, securely, and let the boundary and the ways of the world win out? Because they do win out, brothers and sisters, when we hide behind the the boundaries that exist of separation, or boundaries of racism, boundaries of political choice. There's all sorts of boundaries that prevent us from being in relationship with one another. And the only relationship that we truly need to be concerned about is our relationship with the living God in Jesus Christ. That's the relationship that counts. The inclusion of the Gentiles in this scripture is not a perfunctory, let's just do it because we're having to do it. It's not a reluctant one. It's a full inclusion. And we know it's a full inclusion because those last words they invited him to stay for several days means that Peter and his group received the hospitality of the Gentiles. And they stayed with them. And they lived with them for a few days. They started to build that relationship with one another. A relationship which, which, like I said, hours before didn't exist and couldn't exist. But now it did. Why? Because of the grace of God. And nothing else. They received the hospitality of the Gentiles in Cornelius' house. They shared the table together, just like we in a moment will, will come and share Christ's table. And we will do it because us includes everybody. And no one is excluded. All who have put their belief and trust in Christ can come to that table. You see, when it's an us mentality, then the interactions, the relationships, the dynamics change. All of that changes. Well, we're not against or for, we're just us. Now let's take a flip to Matthew's gospel and the words that we heard there about abundance. Because it's okay, all of us being together, we also have to recognize that as we do the work of the kingdom, that we have had provision given to us as we go about living life as well. It's about looking at things from an aspect of abundance instead of scarcity. It's another boundary that has to be overcome. You see, because the world wants to push scarcity. We lament and we look at the things that we don't have. Who do we include and exclude? Nobody. Are we given the things that we need in order to do God's work? Yes. And so now we have the, 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 the inclusiveness and the, and the togetherness and all the things that we need, but do we recognize all of that? Who is our neighbor that we need to extend things to? Because we have all the things we need to extend 
our gratitude to our neighbor. Matthew's gospel tells us not to be anxious, to trust in God's abundance. You know, we, we again take time to think about all the things that we haven't got. We haven't got this and we haven't got that. I could do with that. If only, if only this was here, then this might happen. No. Sometimes we stay awake at night thinking about the things that we haven't got. When God has given us an abundance in our midst already, we're just looking in the wrong place. Do we focus on the abundance? Or do we live into the worldly myth of scarcity? See, that myth of scarcity that the world promotes prevents us from joining in the places that God wants us to join in. God is already at work in the world. He doesn't need us, but he does want us to join in. If we think scarcity, then we question, we worry, we get anxious. And when we are all those things, we don't act. We become paralyzed from doing the very things that God wants us to do because we don't think we have what we need, and yes, we do. We fail to move forward. We simply look to survive instead of thriving. We simply look to survive when we focus on scarcity instead of thriving when we look at the abundance that God has given unto us. When we look at the abundance, we have a renewed sense of hope. We live in, in gratitude because we have the things that we need and we have a different outspec- outlook on life. We value those around us, all of us around us. And that's the challenge. Can we do that? At the end of the day, do you, do you count your blessings? Or do you lament your woes? Because whichever one you do is going to set you up for tomorrow morning. Because if you go to sleep thinking about all the blessings that God has given unto you, then you're going to wake up in that same frame of mind. If you go to sleep lamenting your woes, then that's what's going to be on your mind in the morning. Do we engage the day with joyous optimism? Or do we simply trudge through the day thinking about what's going to happen next? In this particular time, which is unprecedented, the virus, the the division within this nation, the racism that exists, and, and you, can, you can fill that list in. They're all, they're all there. Unprecedented things. How can we move out of them and overcome them? God says it's about us all, which means we can't exclude. God says there's a, an abundance and don't worry because I've given it, even in these circumstances. Look around. Seek them out. You know, one of the things that we've really been trying to do as we've been separated is is maintain contact, maintain relationships with each other. So I'm going to ask for a a renewed push in that direction. I've been hearing from so many people that they're, they're grateful for all the things that we've been trying to do and put in place. But there's also those who I'm hearing from that, that maybe haven't been contacted too much, that, that are feeling a little bit isolated. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to challenge you with a renewed direction. I know many of you have been contacting people. Contact five more. All it takes is time. Are we Are willing to give the time to build the relationships? Just to reach out and, and touch someone and say, I care. And I know this is a difficult time. You might, be, you might be at home lamenting the fact that you haven't had too many phone calls from people. That somehow you've been missed off a list. Well, we have a church directory. It's full of phone numbers. It's full of people that you interacted with when we did gather together. Instead of lamenting the fact and the scarcity of, of calls coming in, 
make the call yourself and break that scarcity. Because we can do both and, brothers and sisters. We can be the recipients of calls, but we can also be the giver of calls. And so right now, when, when things are, are really coming to a head, I mean, it would be wonderful to gather for worship again, and I'm looking forward to that time. Just being in the presence of others is something that, that we've missed so much, and it's so tangible. But whilst we're not doing that right now, and yes, there are some groups who are getting together, meeting at their homes, meeting in different places, and, and I'm praying for the day that we can start to do that here. But in the meantime, let's reach out. If you were in a particular place within the sanctuary or, or in Fellowship Hall or, or even the chapel, when you came to worship and there were folks around you, if you haven't spoken to them or you haven't contacted them, just pick up the phone. Just say, hey, I'm missing you. You're in a team of the church or you're in a ministry. Reach out. Break down the boundary of separation and isolation by a simple phone call. We can do it, brothers and sisters. We have been doing it. We need to continue doing it all the more. It's about us, all of us. The gospel is for everybody. We have what we need in our midst to do the things that God calls us to do at this time and in this particular place. It means seeing things differently. It means looking at the things that prevent us as boundaries to be overcome, not things to be lived into and, and stay behind. You see those boundaries inhibit, they constrict, and we're not to succumb to that. God has a particular purpose for us. To be all that God wants us to be. We need to understand who we are to reach, who we are, and that we have already what is necessary to do just that. And all of God's people said, Amen. And so, brothers and sisters, we come to the table. We come to receive the hospitality of a living, loving God who draws us in and says, come sit with me. Come eat, drink with me. Not just individually, but as all those who have put their belief and trust in our Lord Jesus Christ. All come to this table. And as we come to this table, we remember all that God has done for us in, in God's search for us, God's desire to be in that relationship with us. We come together. We look to be who God calls us to be. Let us pray. Gracious God, Lord, we thank you that we are invited to your table. That it's a, a table that is open to all. That you call us into that relationship with you. And we thank you. We thank you for these gifts of wine and bread. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. That we can come and, and, and realise the depth of your love. The depth that made him give his life for us. So that we could indeed be in relationship with you. We thank you for your gift of the Holy Spirit. As we heard in the scriptures today, nudging and pushing and directing us, even today, Lord, as it was yesterday, and it will be for all our tomorrows. Lord, help us to listen to the nudges that are given. Nudges from the living God to, to go in the direction that you call us to go. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, on the night that he was betrayed, Jesus was in the upper room with the disciples. He took the bread, and after looking up and giving thanks, he, he broke it. He said, this is my body. It's broken for you. Take and eat all of it, and when you do, do so in remembrance of me. In the same manner, after supper, he took the cup. 
And he said, this is the cup of the new covenant. It's given in my blood, shed for the remission of sins. And whenever you drink of this, do so also in remembrance of me. It says, whenever we eat the bread and drink the cup, we proclaim the death of our Lord Jesus Christ until he comes again. This is God's feast for God's people that has come to the table. And as we come, we take the bread, the body of Christ. We take the cup, the blood of Christ. We eat and we do indeed remember. Let us pray. Holy and living God, as we go about living life, help us to recognize and, and understand your call, your desire, your purpose to reach all, that we wouldn't exclude, that we wouldn't stand behind boundaries, but Lord, that we would live into the abundance that you have given us, both individually and communally, to be who you call us to be, your people in this time and in this place. In your son's name we pray. Amen.
Brothers and sisters, the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ is that he stands at the door of our hearts and he knocks. He knocks that we would open that door to him and let him in. If you would like to profess or reprofess your faith or simply talk about what that means, please get in contact with me. We can begin the conversation. We can look at what it means to be in relationship with the living God. Brothers and sisters, as we begin this five weeks journey, let us remember us is everyone. There is no demarcation. There is no human se separation. It is all. And that's who we are to extend the grace and love of our Lord Jesus Christ to. And as we go about and do that, recognize that we have an abundance because God's given it to us. And we have to put the two together and we have to do and be who God calls us to be. And know, even in our separation, that we are truly not alone. That we go with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, with the love of God, with the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, each and every moment of each and every day. And all of God's people said, Amen. You're my brother, you're my sister, so take me by the hand. Together we will work till he comes. There's a foe that can defeat us when we're walking side by side. Yeah.